The western part of Kentucky is home to the small community of Oak Level. Nearby, if you venture over a hillside and through a holler, you might just hear that rural serenity broken by the sound of a hammer against an anvil. Saw a fella doing it at a craft show. His name's Larry Cole, and, and uh, I was uh, very impressed with it right off the bat. And, and uh, I watched him and watched him. He finally asked me if I wanted to try it, and I said, uh, I said sure, and jumped in. And, and uh, I was just really taken with it at that point. The very first piece I ever made, I, I just didn't have really much to work with. Um, and I didn't have any steel stock handy, so, but I did have some uh, foot-long barn nails uh, that I had uh, left over from, from my log cabin that I built. And, and um, I, <laughs> so I had my little brake drum forge with my wife's hair dryer on it and some lump charcoal from Walmart. So I started making uh, S-hooks out, uh, out of those nails. Later I found out that those nails were probably some of the hardest metal I could have found to use. <laughs> so it was a little hard right off the bat. But uh, yeah, I started making S hooks and then I started making uh, more decorative hooks with hearts on the top and, and just started progressing, uh, learning new techniques and refining them and, and uh, experimenting, failing a lot. Uh, the good thing about blacksmithing is, is you can always, you can almost always correct a mistake. And uh, or even if you totally ruin something, you can usually cut that part off and then make the rest into something else. So it's, that's one of the things I enjoy about it. It's, it's like it has an eraser. You can go back and fix your, <laughs> fix your mistake. Uh, it's artistic, it's uh, physical, it's kind of uh, challenging. So, and I love old things, you know, uh, antiques and antique machinery. 1500 degrees, the learning curve is pretty quick on which end to touch and which end not. Uh, there aren't too many blacksmiths around uh, here uh, anymore, and um, so I started doing craft fairs and things, and, and I almost immediately started getting more work than I could do. Um, so I started. Uh, uh, really honing in on the, or focusing in on the things that I really wanted to do the most and, and try to get better and better each piece I made. And uh, I started making money at it and I went from there and turned it into a business. I make everything from tiny little jewelry pieces up to larger architectural pieces like gates and, and uh, you know strap hinges and, and but um, a lot of the things that I end up making have to do with food. <laughs> I think people enjoy food, I know I do. I make a lot of ladles, uh, pot racks are an especially hot seller you know to hang over kitchen islands. I make uh, spatulas. Uh, all sorts of things in that regard. Um, I also really enjoy making colonial reproduction hardware for, uh, for homes, you know, uh, Suffolk thumb latches and bean cusp door pulls and that sort of thing. Um, I get a lot of call for that. So I, I end up doing a lot of uh, fireplace sets, pokers, uh, that uh, the people want something that they can hand down, you know, through the generations, and, and, and especially if they can see it being made, they really appreciate it. I also make just fanciful things. I make a lot of animals, snakes, rams, leaves, uh, organic forms really uh, interest me. Um, of course, that sort of flows from the from the metal very easily. That you can you can make organic forms, and uh, and of course. Nature is one of the reasons I like to do it because I enjoy being out here and and it's, it's very different from you know uh, city life I guess. Yeah, well, I always joke that it's uh, every little boy's dream. You know, it's smoke, fire, dirt, noise. You get to hit things with a hammer. <laughs> but there's there's just something about taking 
that metal and something that you consider so hard and permanent and shaping it to the way you want it. I guess it's a it's a way, uh, also a way probably to vent a few frustrations, I would imagine. <laughs> the metal, when it's hot, is like clay. Uh, you can make it into anything you want, then put it in the water to cool it, pull it out, and instantly you have something that will be there thousands of years. That feels pretty good. The, the thing that seems to separate me from, from a lot of blacksmiths, I think, is just my, how strange I am. <laughs> um, I have a, I, I guess I'm too stupid to know what I can't do. Uh, so if I, and, and I have this imagination uh, and that, uh, that not everyone has, I guess. Uh, I have kind of an artistic bent in the first place. And that, that sort of combined with uh, a very good mechanical, physical hand-eye coordination and that sort of thing. Um, I, I, I guess that that's what might make me different is, is I have that little split personality. I, I, uh, um, I'm very interested in the aesthetics of things, but I'm, I, I'm just as uh, happy to, uh, to be changing the water pump on my car. So those two things together I think give me what I need. I, I kind of say I was blessed with a, a strong arm and, a, and an eye for beauty, you know, and uh, I think that's what makes me a, a, a good blacksmith. Thanks for joining us today for this episode of Kentucky Farm Bureau's Bluegrass and Backrows. If you have a story idea or want to let us know what you think of the show, send us an email to bluegrassandbackroads at kyfb.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.